Welcome to Delicious Home and Garden. Today we make a beautiful Jamaican breadfruit. Today we make a beautiful roasted breadfruit, just like they do in the islands. Hello everyone. So today we're gonna be making a beautiful roast breadfruit. And uh, we don't have fireside here or a fire pit or anything like that, but we're gonna roast it in the oven. And you need to, at this time, set your oven to 405. If your oven gets a little bit on the hotter side, then adjust it to 400. And if it's the reverse, you can go to 410. All right, so here we have our breadfruit. Um, the way that I pick a breadfruit, if you ever wanted to know, you see the cells here? I always pick one with quite open cells because sometimes when the cells are smaller, I feel like I was told by my grandmother that that means the breadfruit is not fully mature. So you can see these cells are nice and big, but let's say if the cells were small like it is here and tight, that would mean it didn't fully develop. Also, it needs to have a good weight to it and firm, uh, no rotting spots. And when it's ready, you'll know because it has a smell like, um, kind of like uh, a mango-y, but um, plantain kind of a smell. So we're gonna cut it out in a circle here, just right around. It's difficult to cut, so just go a little at a time. And along with this, we're going to be making a beautiful um, snapper. A, sorry, not a snapper, a grouper. But in Jamaica, if they were making this, they would use snapper. In Guyana, they would use butterfish or banga mary. Here in Canada, um, we have access to all of those fishes, and I prefer the grouper because my kids don't like too much bones and then I'd have to clean it all out for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this part here. You're just cutting into a V and then we're going to put a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. I've got a smaller knife, it's easier to get into the crease. Okay, um, this is not really usable for anything, it's kind of starchy, so you can discard that. This little piece here, there we go. And the texture of breadfruit, if you've not cooked it, it's exactly that, it's like a bread. It's like a bread um, kind of texture, it like pulls apart like bread but the flavor is very nutty and it's not like a potato. It's a little sweet and once you cook it, it kind of dries out like bread. So when you add it to like anything with a sauce, it just sucks it up and it just works perfectly for anything like that, like stews. Today we're gonna do uh, a little, um, grouper with a coconut sauce and some okra okay so we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of olive oil if I had coconut oil I would put that because um, I like to keep it authentic but I've run out of coconut oil so as my grandma used to say when you don't have mommy you have to suck granny <laughs> 
So we're just using this beautiful olive oil. I'm gonna put it in the pan here. Before I do that, I'm just gonna season it a little. Some salt. I like doing it with a little bit of oil because this part here ends up getting crispy, like almost like when you fry it. I love that. Something that if you roasted it over a fire pit, you wouldn't be able to attain. So it's a different way of kind of doing that. Just gonna rub the little bit of excess oil on my hand on the skin. I don't want too much oil. And now once the oven reaches 405, I'm gonna put it in. To make this today, you're going to need the coconut milk, any brand, coconut cream or milk. I'm gonna need some okra, one and a half tomato, one and a half onion, some thyme, whatever kind of thyme you have. I have broad leaf, so I'm using that. See that? And I'm gonna need some garlic. I'm gonna grab the willy. Because I have fresh weary from the garden, I'm gonna use that, but if I guess you were in Jamaica, you'd use Scotch bonnet and, you know, you just use whatever is local to you. So I'm gonna use probably about four or five of these. And then I'm gonna go ahead and prep the vegetables. So the okra, I'm just cutting off the tips of it you can slice it down the middle if you like. I like it whole because it, then it doesn't let out all that slime from it. Um, I find the more you cut the okra, the more it kind of gets slimy. And if you're going to chip it up, then you need to leave it for like two to three hours in open air to kind of dry out a little. And then I find it's really good. It's kind of like, you know, as you stir rice, more develops gluten. It's the same thing with okra. As more you cut it, it kind of develops more slime. And apparently that's the good part for you. So I want to keep it all in there. Keep it whole. If you uh, don't like okra, what are some things that you could use? Well, you could use some nice spinach, maybe some green beans. Um, zucchini. But my favorite is okra with this because I remember having this dish a lot when I was pregnant. And they told me if I ate a lot of okra, my baby would have a lot of hair. And when he was born, he needed a haircut, people. It was a lot of hair. So, this is the way I know how to make it. I'm going to give these guys a quick rinse. Water also activates the slime in okra. But because we have it whole, it doesn't really matter wash it off with some cold water. Okay. And now we're just going to do the seasonings. Weary pepper. If you didn't, um, let's say this dish sometimes if we can't find breadfruit because breadfruit's like something that's in season so it's seasonal if we didn't we would make something called a boil and fry which is um, some yucca um, sweet potatoes uh, medium ripe plantain or bananas um, and you'd boil them in some coconut milk 
but not a lot. You want it to kind of render down with the milk. And then just when the milk is all gone and it's cooked, you add onions and tomato and all this stuff that I'm cutting up here. Some onions, some thyme, some peppers, some garlic, and then you kind of let it saute in that. And then you would add that to the fish dish as a side. Because yucca and root vegetables do act like a sponge similar to the breadfruit. So I'm going to go ahead and prep all these and we'll be back. So here I have my weary pepper cut up, my tomatoes, one and a half onion, about seven leaves from the broadleaf thyme. And if you don't have broadleaf thyme, you can use the regular wood thyme. Um, here I have four pieces of garlic and now I'm going to add some ginger and this is half a lime. I like to keep all the, the garbage. It's not really garbage, but it's actually gold because you could add this stuff to your garden and it just gives you back all that nutrients in your plants. So this is how I do the, I just give it a scrape. You can scrape it with, I see people scrape it with the back of a spoon, whatever is easiest for you. You don't even have to scrape it if you don't want to. You can just wash it and use it like that. So I'm trying to cut it really nice and thin so you won't get big chunks of ginger in there. So first I give it like a long matchstick chop and then I'm going to go the other way. These are the only things I really want to be really fine. Fish is really delicate, so you don't want to add too, too much stuff to it and kind of overpower the taste, especially if you got a really nice, fresh piece of fish. Okay, so here's all of our prep work done. Didn't take us 15 minutes, and now I'm going to wash the fish and prepare that. Okay, so I've washed our fish and it's sitting in some lime, and before I rinse it off, I'm just gonna add to this plate some black pepper, about five cracks, some flour. You don't have to fry your fish if you don't want. This is a, a pepper salt mix that I use. So in the summer when I get the weary pepper, I get a whole batch of salt and probably about six cups of pepper and I pound it together and it makes this delicious salt and it's a good way to preserve your pepper. Okay, so I'm gonna add that in and I'm gonna get some garlic powder. bit of garlic powder, about quarter teaspoon, and quarter teaspoon of onion powder. Okay. And we're just gonna give that a toss with the hand. You can use a spoon if you like, but if you feel comfortable, then go ahead and use your hand. Okay. And that's gonna be our coating. We're gonna coat the fish and then we're gonna lightly fry it. I, anytime I cook fish, that I always do that. I, even if it's curry, I don't like to cook the fish fresh right away. I like to just give it a light coating. It helps to hold the fish together. It doesn't fall apart in the curry. And it stays really moist on the inside. So it's a little trick that I learned. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the fish and we're gonna go over to the pot. Alrighty, so here's our fish. 
I just want to show you it's very fresh. If your fish smells like ammonia even after you've washed it, that means it's past its due date. You need to get rid of that. It should have a nice pink color to it. See, you can see the yellow on the, the scales and the skin is still firm. It's not, Sometimes if fish has gone bad, the skin will just pull off like that, but the skin is still nice and fresh. And again, it'll have, yes, a smell of the sea, but shouldn't be overly fishy. That means it's not fresh if it is, okay? Um, I normally I like to use the fish head because that's my favorite, but fish only comes with one head. So when we bought the whole fish, I already used the head in curry a um, couple uh, days ago. So this is what we have left and it's beautiful yellow grouper steak. Okay. We're just gonna lightly coat it in the flour. This dish here, you know, usually takes me about half an hour prep and about an hour cooking time because of the roast breadfruit that usually takes a while to cook. So here we have our beautiful coated fish. We're gonna let it, um, if it's cold, get to room temperature because that's the best way to fry it. Mine is almost at room temperature and I kind of want to cook it when my breadfruit is halfway. And we didn't discuss the cook time for the breadfruit, but it's about 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the size. You'll know when it's done, when you can stick a knife through it and it comes out with ease. Also, there'll be a really fragrant smell coming from the breadfruit. So I have it in the oven now, mm, about two minutes. So. I'm not going to be frying this for another 20 minutes. Hey guys, so we're about 20 minutes of the breadfruit cooking in the oven, roasting in the oven. And here in this pan, I have some ghee. Now I told you earlier, I'd prefer to use coconut oil, um, especially when I'm cooking Caribbean food because that's authentic to that region. But due to COVID, I only go to the grocery store every two to three weeks. So when I run out of something, I really run out of it. Um, it's been uh, kind of tricky that way, but also I've learned how to be more resourceful. So uh, right here in this pan, I'm using some ghee, clarified butter. And um, that goes really well with fish also. If you were like, say in Dominica, I had a beautiful steamed fish by the sea when we were there at the beach and they serve it on a bag, like at the side of it was a baguette um, with lots of garlic butter. It was so delicious. Their food over there is um, French influence. So you can just tell, there we go. Now the lights are on. So um, I put about three and a half tablespoons of ghee. So it just made a light coating. And the reason I'm using ghee or um, I would have used coconut oil is because once I'm finished frying the fish, I'm actually going to do the onions and all the other prep in here. I'm not going to do two different pans because I want that flavor from the fish. And having the little bit of flour will also help to thicken up our sauce. Um, that we're gonna eat our beautiful breadfruit with. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait for this to come to temperature. And my fish has also come to room temperature in this time. Important that your fish is at room temperature. That way it will get a nice sear, a nice brown color on the outside. We're not gonna cook our fish all the way through though. We're just gonna sear it probably two minutes on each side and then start our process. We just want it to create a coating that will hold it together. So once we cook it, it won't fall apart in the steaming stage. All right, we'll be back shortly. 
So just a quick note, I know that we're roasting the breadfruit in the oven, but let's say this were summertime and I could use my fire pit outside. What I would do at that point is take the entire um, breadfruit and I would make a blessing on the top of it. The stem is at the bottom, make a cross at the top and I'd rub a little coconut oil on it and then I would stick it in the actual coals of the fire pit and let it roast right and just keep turning it every 15 minutes turning it or 10 minutes sorry turning it and turning it until the whole thing has been roasted and again you would check it by sticking a knife through it and once it's been roasted then you bring it in cut it in half and scoop out the center and that's how you would enjoy it that way but this is also a nice way. Don't feel like you're missing anything. Our pan is smoking, you can tell by, look, when I stick the spoon in, it starts to fry. I don't know if you can see that. So we're going to add our fish. And the flour helps to do two things, thicken the sauce and give a nice crust on the fish. Don't get rid of your plate, keep it, because we're going to put the fish back in here until we get the other things cooked. Okay? So it's going to be two minutes on each side. And something I'm going to add to mine is this. This is moringa, and it comes in a long stick, sometimes called drumstick. And you've probably heard of moringa. It's like a superfood. But before it became a superfood um, in Guyana, we use it a lot in our fish dishes. It sucks up the sauce, and then you can suck on this, and inside has like a little nut like a little it's a bean really and it's so delicious and it works as a good vessel to suck up any sauces that you might want and it's like a fun thing to add to your dish as well as being nutritious i would normally use this in my fish curry shrimp curry um, any kind of um, seafood stew i would put it in and this kind of like a seafood stew and I love moringa with coconut milk. It's so delicious. So I'm going to be adding this. I normally buy them at the grocery store and you just kind of have to peel off the skin a little and you can cut it out into, um, these are about three and a half inch batons and you can keep them in your freezer and whenever you're cooking something you can add it. And what a great way to have a superfood as well as enjoy your meal. So this is about two minutes now. We're gonna we're gonna turn this, and you can see the fish is not too dark. Just has a nice little golden color. I'll show you. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Just a little crust. Okay a little crust. I'm going to put my fan on and we'll be right back. When the fish is golden brown, 
Remove it from the pan. If there's an excess amount of oil that you don't want to saute your vegetables and seasoning in, please feel free to drain it at this time. Once fish is golden brown, remove it and place it in the plate. Then let's get ready to saute the vegetables and seasoning. Hey guys, please add all these ingredients to the pan and saute for four minutes. Well, <laughs> as things happen, the video was not on while I added everything to the pot. So basically once I took the fish out, I just added everything that was on the cutting board, which is the garlic, the onion, the hot peppers, and um, the saigen, the okra, the coconut milk, and two cups of water, okay? And I added half a can of the coconut milk. Now, this just happened, so I'm going to let it cook down for eight minutes before I add the fish. So, let me recap again. Once I took out the fish, the oils that were left in there, I actually cooked all the vegetables in it and I sauteed it a bit for like two minutes then I added the two cups of water and half a can of coconut milk you can thank technology guys that you didn't get to see it but I'm sure you know how to saute something so that's just basically what I did I sauteed it on medium heat and now it's it's been cooking for approximately three minutes i'm gonna let it go for another five then i'm gonna add the fish okay and the reason i don't add the fish right in is because i don't want my fish to overcook i like my fish to be nice and delicate on the inside not dry so that's the reason for that and you can see they're quite chunky steaks but this will cook in like 10 minutes so I want to get a good start on the saigen and the okra. Saigen being moringa. This is moringa. I think the video might have cut out um, when I was talking about the moringa. So let me just grab it and I can show you. This is Moringa. Again, so sorry for that, guys. So this is Moringa. It comes in a long stick, um, also called Saigen in Guyana. And in the grocery store, you might see it as a drumstick because it looks like a long drumstick. You basically buy it, then you peel it back a little, peel off some of the skin, and then you can cut it into chunks and keep it in your freezer or you can use it right away and it's not in the frozen section it will be in your fresh area the fresh fridge did it stop again okay yes it did okay yeah so it'll be in, in um wherever you know the carrots and whatever is and once you got it you bring it home you peel it you can cook it in curries I like to use it mainly in seafood dishes so my fish curry my shrimp curry um, because this is a fish dish that's why I'm using it in here because I love it it's kind of like a vessel that sucks up all the sauce and you can suck on it and outside is fibrous so you wouldn't eat the outside but you can chew on it and then the inside is like this juicy sort of nutty bean very good and you, i'm sure you've all read about how moringa is full of vitamins and packed with minerals and so much health benefits again if you wanted to not use okra or moringa you can use your spinach but you'd put the spinach and the fish in at the same time because the cooking time on that would be similar okay so we're coming down to about two minutes 
So this is Moringa. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask below. Um, it's really delicious. It doesn't have any kind of bitter taste, guys. It's very sweet, in fact, and it's not slimy or anything like that. It's just sucks up whatever and has whatever flavor you cook it in. That's the flavor of it with a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of nuttiness. So try Moringa. Peter likes Moringa, right, Peter? Yeah, you like it? Yep. So we're just getting about the two minute mark. You can see the sauce is getting a little thick on me. I'm just gonna add another little half a cup of water. Okay. Depending on your pan and your heat, you know, the water dissolves really quickly. So we're just gonna add our fish right in there. Make a nice little spot. Another thing I added to it is some sweet pepper. I had um, a sweet pepper and I added it to it. Okay. But flavor wise, if you add those things that were on the cutting board, you should be okay. But a little sweet pepper doesn't help, and I love the flavor of sweet pepper. Whenever we'd have this dish in Jamaica, they would always have tons of sweet peppers on it. Okay, you can cover it down if you like to let it steam at this point, and then turn your fire down on a medium low, not too high. Okay, I'm gonna get the cover. And about this time, it's been 30 minutes for our breadfruit, and I'm gonna bring it out and we can check on it. Okay. Put it here so you can see it. You can see the skin it's gotten a little kind of yellowy green and I'm just gonna do the test on it with the knife uh, let's see this one here okay. oh came right out yeah right out so that tells me it's cooked I'm gonna give it two more minutes in there and then because I felt a little crunch when I put it in so I'm just going to give it two more minutes and then I'll show you how to prepare it. Okay guys, so I've tasted it and it tastes excellent. I did need to add a little bit of salt, which I did do. And I added about a quarter to a half a teaspoon of sugar, just a little bit of sprinkling of sugar. That's up to you, but I find it gives it a nice rounded flavor. Just like when I'm baking, I always add some salt. So I'm just gonna coat the fish here. It's almost ready. Five more minutes and she'll be done. Okay, Peter's all excited, can't control himself. So I'm gonna cover it back down for five more minutes because I've adjusted everything and the next time I see it, it'll be in my belly. Just took our beautiful breadfruit out the oven. You can see it's still bubbling. And I'm just gonna show you this is what I love. See this? Crispiness. But inside will be soft and ready to accept the sauce. Delicious. So that took about 40 minutes, 35 to 40 minutes. And this is about, um, I would say about a two pound um, breadfruit. So not very big. Sometimes I buy them, they're almost three, four pounds. So this is perfect size for us. It's just three of us tonight for dinner. So 
this works out great, but this crusty part, I'm gonna have to fight my husband for it. <laughs> so I'm gonna let it cool, and then once it's cool, I'll show you how to peel it. Here guys, I have this sort of Jamaican pickled um, onion and carrot. Um, what you do is you just get your vinegar and just maybe a half a teaspoon of salt, a cup of vinegar, half a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of sugar. And you can get some spices, cloves, allspice. Um, you can even put star anise if you like and um, cinnamon and I the way I make it quickly is I put it in the microwave and then once it kind of warms up about a minute then you can smell the aroma it just infuses the vinegar and then I will cut up some onions in some strips and shave some carrots and add it to the warm vinegar and Within half an hour, it'll be pickled and it's delicious on top of fish. I love this when I go to Jamaica. They always have this to serve. And I added about two hot peppers, but it's entirely up to you how much hot pepper you want to add. But this is good at the side of anything. Even your peas and rice you can have it with. It's just delicious. So now we have our fish, it's finished, it's a little hot. Now I've added a bit of green onion, fresh green onion, and oh, I just lost that. I'm gonna put some nice lime in here, just to finish it off. And that's ready to go. Now we're gonna work on the breadfruit. So it's just, it's just like bread, guys. It's really soft. It's still a little warm to work with, but that's okay. My hands are used to it. If you wanted to wait till it cools down, then you can do that. But I'm just going to cut the skin off. If you add some butter to this, it's just delicious on its own. But we're gonna have it with our fish. I'm just gonna cut it into chunks. And I just wanna show you one of them. Soft, very soft. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and peel the rest. Here's our delicious roast spread fruit. Still hot. And this is how much of the skin I cut off. Okay, so you can have an idea. You can't really use a potato peeler because you need a little bit more than that off. Unless you plan to go over it twice. And it's really... Um, soft to cut it's not a difficult the only part i would say is a little bit tougher is the crispy part but that just cuts through also let's get our fish ready here is our beautiful finished dish you don't want too many pieces of bread for it it's very filling it's just light bread so here i have about five pieces and two pieces of fish along with that delicious pickle beautiful just beautiful thanks for joining me today i hope you make this meal for your family it's delicious it's hearty it's you feel love when you eat it and it always reminds me of my beautiful vacations in Jamaica and since I can't be there I'm bringing it to you God bless and have a great day thanks for watching